Welcome back everyone, Twish is here, and I am back yet again for yet another Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles video, and today it comes courtesy of my friends over at The Loyal Subjects. This is an early advanced look at their upcoming, straight from the TMNT IDW comic book line, Shredder in Hell. He's not alive anymore, he's dead, and he is rotten in hell. <laughs> and of course it has great artwork all over the box. Mateus Santaluco there. Now, I gotta give it to him. The packaging is pretty darn stellar. It's a giant box. It has a little flappy opening cover. And you get a comic book inside, along with seeing the actual figure and all the accessories. On the back side, you get to see everything that the action figure entails. And I like just the design of it. It's a lot of fun. I like just the nods to the comic book, Shredder in Hell. You get a little bit of a write-up on what you're dealing with here if you've not read the comic. And it talks about how his 31 points of articulation, double joints, maximum opposability, get in the pits and play with all these accessories that this shredder comes with. And here's the barcode as well, and I will have links down in the description below if you wanna go ahead and pre-order it now. So, this is gonna be an absolute blast. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new TMNT IDW comic book series, Shredder in Hell by The Loyal Subjects. Now, before we get to the figure, what I actually appreciate is that there is a comic book inside. It's issue number one of the Shredder in Hell miniseries. And I have not read this until picking up this comic, which, again, I did more research to find out the end of the story and everything else. The artwork is amazing on it, and I like that as someone not knowing too much about the IDW TMNT lore, this really helped in appreciating this figure more. It also helped in looking at some cool demons... And then also going, well, maybe this figure could have come with this or this, right? Of course, you got to nitpick it after the source material. However, here is everything out of the packaging. Figure, tons of accessories, and it's very different from the standard release version of the Shredder, which makes it so that you don't really have to get this for your collection unless you're just a big fan of the Shredder and Hill comic book line. Now, what I appreciate and what differentiates this Shredder is that he comes with these powers these hellish powers and effects they're more in like this blue translucent plastic so you kind of have an energy orb and then you have what looks like fingertips kind of energy flowing off of it and i totally dig that because he comes with a number of extra hands these are non-bladed but i would have preferred if the paint was just a little bit better on the wrapping same with these gloves the paint could have used a little bit of improvement but I like these more ethereal Shredder gauntlet powers. Again, very different from all the other Shredders in my collection. The head portrait, much like the standard version of the Shredder, is amazing as well. He's more of a gritted teeth, unhelmeted version, and I totally dig that. The paint, for the most part, is great. Some of the sideburns on the side could have been a little bit more spot on, but otherwise, that's a great head portrait sculpt. And I really dig it. Now, in having this head portrait with the comic book source material provided, it really did strike me that this Shredder in Hell miniseries does share story elements with the classic Dante Alighieri's Dante is Infernal, the Divine Comedy story. That is really cool to see. But I would have loved to have had Splinter be an accessory and his ethereal sort of rat form, sort of a guide to Orokosaki throughout the afterlife. And I just think that that would have made for just an even better version of this Shredder in Hell action figure. He comes with a sword. It's the same sword as the standard version, although it has more of that muted goldish silvery paint going on that you'll see on the entirety of the Shredder. It really mutes him like he's in hell, along with this wild, wicked skull axe weapon. This is really cool. And again, something that totally differentiates this Shredder from any other Shredders in my collection. I absolutely love that. That just makes him menacing there. But speaking of the Shredder, again, this is going to be the exact same figure as the standard release, but he has more of that muted comic book tone of just being in hell, right? So that's pretty cool to see. And I like the whited out eyes. I think the whited out eyes definitely fits better. More of that glowy sort of eyes. If you look at the artwork, he has this really nice detailed cape. Everything looks good sculpt wise. 
They've really gone all out, and you can tell that the loyal subjects have started to listen to the fans. You'll see in the improved articulation, the improved paint, the improved accessories, it really is a great fun figure. And I'm really actually stoked. In fact, I'm going to tell you, I think I like the in hell version better than the standard version because of all the wild weapons. And I like how they've done the wrappings to the gauntlets. Nothing is wonky. Nothing is weird. The pins do line up with the paint that you see. It's not miscolored. It's not mismatched. Thank you for doing that. That means a lot. And in terms of the articulation, the biceps may look a little wonky from time to time, especially in that articulation. But you have to kind of consider it's a toy for God's sakes. At this point, you're moving it around. People don't move like this in general. Have some fun with your toys. The arms go all the way up. He's got double jointed elbows. Everything looks stellar in terms of the movements. And then you have the wrists that will rock and rotate. And you can pop the hands off at will. Nothing stuck. Nothing takes a while. Although you will run into that with the helmet. It's incredibly hard to pull off. That's maybe something of a nitpick. Improve just swapping out the heads. Not much of an ab crunch, basically just an upper diaphragm kind of twist that really doesn't go too far. And same thing with the waist. It only goes so far until you get some resistance. You can kick out pretty well, that's cool to see. Along with the thigh swivel, he's got double jointed knees. And down here with these really cool shredder boots, you have the feet which are all wrapped and painted nicely and you got some rock that goes up, down, left and right with no peg holes on the bottom of the feet. But as you can see, yes, he stands well, he looks great. That's an awesome looking Shredder figure. And to bring up the accessories again, they really add in creating a great figure overall in totality. And I really appreciate the unhelmeted Oroku Saki head. I think that that looks fantastic. Along with all these cool power effects, being that this is a different Shredder. This is Shredder in Hell from the IDW comics. You can even get a Hadouken going, right? That's kind of cool. Now for this effect piece, I had to go back and look at all the artwork and all the covers and I finally figured it out. This is more of this power effect which clips onto his hand. It kind of took me a second, I'm not gonna lie. But I do like that for the most part, you can get each of the powers and effects to work with whatever hands that you're using. So I definitely appreciate that. Much like these more spooky ethereal shredder gauntlets, I think that those look great as well and really differentiate them as the in hell version. You can even pop the cape off if you'd like. You do have to remove the heads, but the sword looks good. The gauntlets look good. He poses very menacingly, especially with being able to hold the sword in two hands. And I like to see the improvement there. And the giant battle axe, which again is my favorite accessory out of the box. That is just a lot of fun. It makes this spooky version of the shredder even more menacing. The skull, the axe, the color scheme, the muted color tone. This is a great looking figure. Loyal Subjects really knocked it out of the park on this one. And if you were wondering, yes, again, this is the same exact shredder as the standard release. Different accessories, different color palettes, but you can swip swap the head portraits, the hands, everything else. The skin tone is not going to exactly match up, but it works for the most part. It's not something you're really going to notice and again with swapping out the head portraits goes easy peasy but you will see some paint rub on the nub that's underneath the head so it's not really too big of a deal but if you were wondering how does this shredder scale with the other idw turtles and i'm happy to say again they've listened to the fan feedback and they have properly scaled the shredder to the four turtle bros so for that i'm very appreciative and I'm stoked to see whatever characters they come out with next. There's a lot of great mutants for the IDW series and ones that I would love to have on my shelf. And these ones in particular, if they were ever to do these more zombified in hell Ninja Turtles, that would be definitely killer to see and they'd go quite nicely with this in hell Shredder. Now, to go from things of the past to now Shredders of the future, well, from Playmates to now the Loyal Subjects to NECA Toys, and then finally with Super 7, you get to see how this Loyal Subject Shredder really matches up in height. So he's going to fall somewhere between NECA and the original Playmates, especially if you wanted to kind of put him with other 
TMNTs from other companies. Some of it might work with the Playmates toys, but he isn't going to be entirely too awkward or too small compared to the other companies. This IDW Shredder definitely goes with his own thing with the IDW Turtles. So that'll wrap it up for my early advanced look at the brand new The Loyal Subjects Shredder in Hell action figure based off the TMNT IDW comic book miniseries. And I gotta say, I do like the regular Shredder. Don't get me wrong, but this Shredder in Hell figure is a lot of fun. I like the color scheme. I like the powers. I like the giant axe. He just looks cool. Now, you can, again, mix and match between the standard version and this in hell version, and you'll get more of the complete package, of course, but you really don't need both unless you're a huge fan of the IDW comic book series or you just like sending Shredder to hell. But you've heard my thoughts. Now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything Shredder in hell. And again, thank you to my friends over at The Loyal Subjects for sending this out for the purposes of this video. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, now let's see what they can really do with some of those IDW characters and mutants, right? And when they do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.